we started looking at uh, effects of a beam splitter on uh, input states. Now, do you have any questions? Okay, so let me recall what we did was uh, the problem we are looking at is uh, you have a symmetric beam splitter. There are two input ports called 1 and 2. There are two output ports called 3 and 4. If it is a symmetric beam splitter, then we use energy conservation between uh, 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and got some relationships between the amplitude reflection and transmission coefficient. And what we found is uh, a classical relationship between the electric fields of the light emerging in 3 and 4 with respect to light entering at 1 and 2. And then we replaced those classical electric fields by annihilation operators and got these equations. A3 is equal to I by root 2 A1 plus 1 by root 2 A2 and A4 is equal to 1 by root 2 A1 plus I by root 2 A2. These can be inverted and uh, we obtain the following equations of the uh, inverted, uh, I mean express, expressing A1 and A2 in terms of A3 and A4. So A1 is equal to minus I by root 2 A3 plus 1 by root 2 A4 and A2 is equal to 1 by root 2 A3 minus I by root 2 A4. This is assuming 50% beam splitter and symmetric. So the reflection coefficients from 1 to 3 is the same as from 2 to 4 and similarly the transmission coefficient from 1 to 4 is the same as 2 to 3. So these, re these relationships relate the uh, annihilation and creation operators in 3 and 4 with respect to 1 and 2. And uh, we started looking at uh, using these to understand what happens when certain states of light are incident at the input. So what we did was the last class, we looked at the following situation that I have a single photon state incident on 1 and nothing incident on the port 2. So as I mentioned last time, we cannot neglect the presence of the second input port in the calculations because if you assumed A2 was 0, so even if I have light incident on 1 only, I cannot neglect 2 because if I forget about A2, then the output relations A3 and A4 do not satisfy the commutation relations. A3, A3 dagger is not equal to 1, A4, A4 dagger is not equal to 1. So I need to always remember that even though port 2, I may not be actually illuminating by any light, I still have the vacuum state entry. So the first example we looked at was a single photon incident on port 1 and nothing incident on port 2. So we said that uh, input vacuum states in 1 and 2 give me output vacuum states in 3 and 4. So we wrote the input state which is given by this as A1 dagger 0, 1, 0, 2. So the output will be, I will, to get the output, I express A1 dagger in terms of A3 dagger, A4 dagger, and use the fact that uh, vacuum incident in 1 and 2 gives out vacuum at the output 3 and 4. So 3, 4, and I have uh, A1 dagger, so I by root 2, a3 dagger plus 1 by root 2 A4 dagger. And this is the output state which gives me I by root 2 1 3 0 4 plus 1 by root 2 0 3 1 4.
And this is a state in which it says that this is a superposition of a photon coming out in three and no photon in four. And another state in which there is a photon coming out in four and there's no photon in three. So this is a superposition state and uh, these two paths three and four are actually entangled by this operation here. Because this cannot be written as a product of states in three and state in four. So how did you go from zero one, zero two, two, zero three, zero four? You didn't attend last class. <laughs> uh, if I have no light states incident in one and two, because this is a linear operation, I have vacuum coming out in three and four. So zero one zero two gives me zero three zero four output, and a one dagger gets modified to a combination of a three dagger and a four dagger because of this relationship here. The A3 and A4 are related to A1 and A2. If I invert these equations, A1 and A2 are related to A3 and A4. And the way I analyze is I write the operator A1 in terms of A3 and A4 and use the fact that vacuums in 1 and 2 gives me vacuum in 3 and 4. So, but we didn't operate anything to get down. Like, when, when, when? No, if I have vacuum input in 1 and vacuum input in 2, what will be output three and four? Zero, three, zero. Yeah. So this is the this is the output in the absence of any light input. With input one photon, the input state I write as a one dagger zero one zero two. Now to get the output state, I represent a one dagger in terms of a three and a four, the output states. So a one dagger is given by i by root two a three dagger plus one by root two a four dagger zero one zero two is given by zero zero three zero four at the output. And now if I operate this, I get the output state. What I will do a little later is uh, use another formulation where we will use these operators to represent the operators at the output and we will get the measure measurements, any observables measured in 3 and 4. For example, what is the probability of detecting a photon here or what is the uh, electric field coming out, expectation of electric field coming out here, etc. by a slightly different procedure where we will assume uh, the uh, it's something like a Heisenberg picture we will use there to, to obtain the representation. But here, this gives me a simplified picture of what kind of output state I expect from this uh, inputting a single photon in state in one of the input ports and vacuum in the other port. Now let me go to another situation where I have one photon coming in one and one photon coming in two. Assume these have the same frequency, the same polarization, etc. Now, so the input is given by 1, 1, 1, 2, which is equal to A1 dagger, A2 dagger, 0, 1, 0, 2. A1, A1 dagger operating on 0, 1 gives me 1, 1, A2 dagger operating on 0, 2 gives me 1, 2. So the output state, I can represent by writing A1 dagger and A2 dagger in terms of A3 dagger, A4 dagger, and using the fact that 0, 1, 0, 2 gets transformed to 0, 3, 0, 4. So A1 dagger is I by root 2, A3 dagger plus 1 by root 2, A4 dagger, 1 by root 2, A3 dagger, plus i by root 2 a4 dagger. Now, let me operate this on this. So, this is i by root 2 a3 dagger plus 1 by root 2 uh, What do I get? 1 by root 2, A3 dagger operating on 0, 3, 0, 4. A4 dagger operating on 0, 3, 0, 4 gives me 0, 3, 1, 4. A3 dagger operating on 0, 3, 0, 4 gives me 
1304 a4 dagger operating on 0304 gives me it's a remember these are creation operators a3 dagger operating on 03 gives me 13 a4 dagger operating on 04 gives me 14 so now i have to use the second now bracket so let me open up this uh, bracket further so what do i get this is equal to so i by root 2 a3 dagger operating on the first state gives me so let me write it here okay a3 dagger operating on 1304 uh, into actually 1 by root 2 plus i by root 2 i by root 2 a3 dagger operating on 0314 plus 1 by root 2 into 1 by root 2 a4 dagger operating on 1304 plus 1 by root 2 into i by root 2 a4 dagger operating on 0314 so this is i by 2 a3 dagger operating on 1304 with a any multiplicative factor yes so square root of 2 2304 minus 1 by 2 a3 dagger on this thing will give me 1314 this is plus half a4 dagger operating on this gives me 1314 minus i by 2 into root 2 0324 A3 dagger operating on 1, 3 gives me square root of 2, 2, 3. That means there are two photons in mode 3, the, the output 3. This is uh, one photon in port 3 and one photon in port 4. Similarly, it's one, uh, 1 in 3 and 1 in 4 and 0 in 3 and 2 in 4. And these two cancel off. So what does it imply? So this state implies that when I have a one photon state here and one photon state here, either both of them go to the third port or both of them go to the fourth port. The probability of getting one photon in port 3 and one photon in port 4 is 0. It's something like an interference. What is actually happening is, you see, whenever there are multiple ways of uh, reaching from point A to point B, and these are all indistinguishable, I must add the probability amplitudes and then square them. There is interference. The probability of getting one photon in three and one photon in four, there are two ways. Both the photons get transmitted or both photons get reflected. Because all the all the, the photons are in the identical state, there is no way of distinguishing at the output whether the port 3 is eliminated from 2 or 1, and similarly for port 4. And I leave it to you to calculate to show that these two processes are exactly out of phase because of a pi by 2 reflection coefficient here. Remember. The reflection coefficient is pi by 2 out of phase with respect to the transmission coefficient. So what happens is the probability of getting one here and one here through both transmitting or both reflecting, the total probability becomes zero because there is interference. This is a different kind of interference compared to what is called a single photon interference. So what is what will happen is I will get either both of the photons here or both photons. So if you have a photon detector here and a photon detector here and look at what are called as coincidence counts, that means what is the probability of getting a photon, a detection in both the photo detectors simultaneously, you will be zero because either 
this photon detector detects two photons and this none or this detects none and this detects two photons and each has half probability because of a one by root two here. The probability that two photons appear in three and none appear in four is mod square of i by root two which is one by two. Similarly, the probability that the photons come in four and none of them appear in three is also half. The probability of getting one in three and one in four is zero. And let me tell you these experiments are conducted. So you have detectors at both terminals, both outputs and you look at what are called as coincidence counting. That means you find out, uh, you send photons after photons and you find out whether you have any detections in both the detectors simultaneously and you find it's zero, it's very close to zero, yes. Yeah, okay, yeah, sorry, yeah, there is a plus sign here. How do you explain this to interference? There are two ways of getting one photon. Okay, there are there is one way of getting both photons in three, and none other than four because this one gets reflected, this one gets transmitted. There's only one way. There's only one way of getting both of them here and none of them here. But to get one here and one here, there are two possibilities. One, either this one transmits and this one transmits simultaneously, or this one reflects and this one reflects. So, the probability of getting at 3 and 4 1 each is the sum of the probability amplitudes of getting both of them transmitted or both of them reflected and that becomes 0. So, it is a kind of a two photon interference. This is a completely non classical picture. It is you cannot in classical if I if, you, if I illuminate from here and here there is always a possibility that there are waves in both, both arms. And this, um, this experiment, which is current, this, so when you, when people measure, for example, uh, you need to measure the detection between these two outputs 3 and 4 uh, as a function of certain delays because you need to detect at the same time. And this experiment is conducted uh, and is called the Hong U metal dip. If you do not do them simultaneously, you still can get detected detection at both because sometimes both the photons are arriving here, sometimes both the photons are arriving here. So they do a measurement and this has been experimentally verified and this is one way of detecting or actually doing an experiment to find out whether these two photons are identical. Now this is a picture in which we have not taken wave packets and done, a, done a, an analysis, with simplified analysis, but I could have taken a wave packet, single photon wave packet here, a single photon wave packet here. And then I would have got essentially a similar kind of uh, uh, a conclusion that either both the photons will arrive in 3 or both photons will arrive in 4. And this is a completely non classical effect. Now, let me go to the another uh, experiment where I can have, I build an interferometer. So, I have. So this is one, two, three, four, five, let me assume that I have uh, a phase shifter here. For example, I could have a different path length on this arm compared to this. In a classical interferometer, this is a classical Mark Zender interferometer. So light is incident in usually one of the ports. A classical in a classical picture, the wave gets transmitted and reflected uh, with equal amounts and then they travel through different paths combined back in the second beam splitter and depending on the phase difference between these two they will interfere constructively in 5 or 6 or uh, give you light both in 5 and 6. And as you change the phase difference between these two arms you will see light coming in 5 or 6 
because one of them is reflected here and reflected. This is transmitted and transmitted. This is reflected and transmitted, transmitted and reflected. So in phi, for example, you have a wave coming from this path, reflected from here and reflected from this beam splitter. There is another one on phi, you have transmitted here and transmitted here. Both of them are even phi. Depending on the phase difference, you will have constructive or destructive interference here. In arm six, you have reflected here, transmitted here, transmitted here, reflected here. And again, depending on the phase difference, you will have constructive or destructive interference. And because of energy conservation, if you have complete constructive interference here, you must have complete destructive interference here. And similarly, the other way around. And if you have uh, an arbitrary phase difference, you'll have light coming in both arms. And you can actually calculate the intensity here or five or six as a function of the phase change will be sinusoidal. It's a two beam interference, very simple two beam interference. Now the question is, I send a single photon. It is interferometer. What am I expected to get at the output five and six? If I had used a classical picture of a photon like a particle and I say that it's either reflected or transmitted, then if it is reflected, it comes here. So it's either reflected or transmitted. Similarly, if it is transmitted here, it could be either reflected or transmitted. So I should have 50% chance of getting light here and 50% chance of getting the photon here. Problem is, please remember, it is not either reflected or transmitted. It goes into a superposition state of both being reflected and transmitted. And so these two parts of the photon actually will now interfere. The probability of the photon taking this path and this path, these two probability amplitudes interfere and will lead to an output either of five or in six. So let's, I can do the calculation. So what we'll do is we will relate one and two to five and six classically and then just replace the classical electric fields by annihilation operators in five and six. Okay, so uh, what is E3? E3 is I by root two E1 plus one by root two E2. And E4, this is classical electric field now. So one by root two E1 plus I by root two E2. Now this is just after the beam splitter one. This is just after. BS one. So let me call this BS one. And this is beam splitter two. So the field three, suppose this length is L one, this path length is L two. Optical path lengths, L1 in arm three and L2 in arm four. So just before, B2, BS2, what will be the fields? E3 will be I by root two E1 plus one by root two E2 into the phase change suffered, which is I times K times L1. The phase change suffered by the wave in going from this beam splitter to this beam splitter is K times L1. So the phase now is exponential I K L1. Similarly, I can write for E4 when it arrives on uh, uh, beam splitter two. So E4, will be equal to one by root two E1 plus I by root two E2 into exponential I K L2. So L2 is the optical path length from BS1 to BS2 along the path four. So this is the field as it enters these points. So what will be E5 and E6? So now, just like I had E3 and E1 in terms of E3, uh, E1 and E2, E3 and E4 in terms of E1 and E2, I can write E5 and E6 in terms of E3 and E4. So E5 will be 
i by root 2 e3 plus 1 by root 2 e4. e3 is incident from here reflected to 5, e4 is incident from here transmitted to 5. So just like 1 goes to 3 and 2 goes to 3, here 3 goes to 5 and 2 goes to uh, 4 goes to 5 and so there is the i by 2, i by root 2 into e3 plus 1 by root 2 into e4. So let me re replace e3 and e4 in terms of e1 and e2. So I will get this is equal to i by square root of 2 into e3 is i by square root of 2 e1 plus 1 by square root of 2 e2 exponential i k l1 plus 1 by square root of 2 1 by square root of 2 e1 plus i by square root of 2 e2 exponential i k l2. So this is equal to minus 1 by 2 e1 Okay, so there is minus 1 by 2 e1 and there is also 1 by 2 e1 here. So exponential i k l1 minus exponential minus plus i k l2. So this is minus 1 by 2 e1 exponential i k l1 plus 1 by 2 e1 exponential i k l2. So there is a minus sign here, there is a minus sign here. And then I have plus i by 2 e2 into exponential i k l1 plus exponential i k l2. So I can take things common out here and write in terms of sine and this one in terms of cosine. So what do I get? So I will have now let me write this here uh, straight away. So e1 exponential i k l average sine a delta L by 2, I will define these quantities plus E2 exponential I K L average sine cos A delta L by 2. L average is L1 plus L2 by 2 and delta L is L1 minus L2, L2 minus L1 by 2. So what I have done is you take out exponential i k l1 plus i k l2 from here common, sorry i k l1 plus i k l2 by 2 and then you will have exponential i k l1 minus l2 by 2 and l minus of l1 minus l2 by 2. So this becomes a sine function uh, with i sorry, there will be i here, there will be i here sorry, there will be i here from the sine function, there will be i here from the cosine function because cosine does not have an i, here is an i sitting. Okay, so this, I have actually eliminated e3 and e4 by writing e5 and e6 in terms of, uh, e5 in terms of e1 and e2. Similarly, you can write e6 in terms of e1 and e2. So now, I can replace these electric fields by the corresponding annihilation, annihilation operators. So for example, I will have a5 is equal to i a1 exponential i k l average sine k delta l by 2 plus i a2 i k l average let me define these quantities cosine k delta l by 2. So l average is l1 plus l2 by 2 and delta L is equal to L2 minus L1. Sorry, L2 minus L1. Okay. These are just operators. So now, let me assume an input of
Okay, so this is. Uh, uh, Actually, I must get the other relation for a six also, but let me do the following. Uh, it is similar to this. It be i a two and the expression plus i a one. The only difference would be this i by root two becomes one by root two, and this uh, in this expression here, so e six will be. One by root two e three plus i by root two e four. Okay. So what will I get? One by root two. Plus i by root two, one by root two e one, plus i by root two e two, exponential i k l two. So this is i by two e one, exponential i k l one, plus exponential i k l two. Plus one by two e two exponential i k l one minus exponential i k l two. So this gives me um, i e one exponential i k l average cosine k delta l by two plus I e two exponential i k l average sine k delta l by two. The cosine and sine have got interchanged between the port five and six. In port five, e one was multiplied by sine, and e two was multiplied by cosine function. And in port six, you have a e one getting multiplied by cosine function, and e two getting multiplied by sine function. Where? Yeah? Yes. Yeah, there will be minus here. Uh, L two minus L one because I defined uh, delta L as L two minus L one. Okay, so so let me write these two equations here. Uh, e five. Is equal to so um, i e one exponential. Uh, let me take out this common. So e five is equal to i times exponential i k l l average into e one times k delta l by two plus e two cos k delta l by two. And e six will be i exponential i k l average into e one cos k delta l by two minus e two sine So let me uh, let me uh, invert this equation and get e1 in terms of e5 and e6. So what do I have to do? I multiply this by uh, this by sine, this by cos, and add. If I if I multiply this by sine and this by cos and add, this will cancel off. So I will get e5 sine. K delta L by two plus e six cos k delta L by two 
will be equal to i exponential i k l average into e1. I multiply the first equation by sine, second equation by cosine, and I add these two equations. Sine square plus cos square is 1. This cancels off and I get this. So actually this uh, gives me E1 is equal to minus i exponential minus i k l average into E5 sine k delta l by 2 plus E6 cos k delta l by 2. Now I can actually replace these electric fields by the annihilation operators and I can write A1 in terms of A5 and A6. So A1 becomes minus i exponential minus i k l average into A5 sine k delta l by 2 plus A6 So now I can go to the input state. So psi in, which is 1, 1, 0, 2, is actually A1 dagger 0, 1, 0, 2. So I can write psi out is equal to, so I write the dagger of this. So I exponential I KL average, A5 dagger sine k delta l by 2 plus a6 dagger cos k delta l by 2 operating on 0 3 0 4 0 5 0 6 sorry so this will be i exponential i k l average into sine k delta l by 2 one five zero six plus cos k delta l by two zero five one six. Output is also superposition state. Of uh, one photon appearing in five and nothing appearing in six, and one in six and one in nothing appearing in five. And it depends, of course, on delta L, which is the difference in path lengths between the two arms. So if delta L is such that this cosine function is 0, if k delta L by 2 is equal to uh, pi by 2, then this cosine function is 0, the sine function is 1, the probability of finding the photon is only in 5. There is no photon appearing in the 6. If the sine function is 0, that means if k delta L by 2 is pi, or 0, then the photon appears only in 6. Please note there is only one photon entering and it is interfering with itself in a sense that the photon has two ways of reaching 5 or 6, one along path 3 or one along path 4 and you have no way to differentiate at the output whether the photon is coming from path 3 or path 4. And so what I need to do is I need to add the probability amplitudes of it's coming here by a 3 or by a 4 and then calculate the total probability. So the probability amplitudes are actually interfering. And so even though there is only one photon, you find an interference effect be between the probability amplitudes of both the paths. So there is a situation, for example, that you have a photon entering here and if you ensure, for example, delta L is equal to 0, photon entering in 1 will always come out of 6. Okay, so 
in wave analysis, it's fine. It says, it says one photon interference. In waves also, if I have an amplitude here, certain light entering here, I can adjust the interferometer to ensure that all the light is coming out of from six. But so this is actually one photon enters and in both arms. Please now note that this rectangle which I've drawn could be millions of miles of size. Millions of miles size. Which means I don't have to have these two parts close together. I could have to travel maybe a, a million miles before I come back under the mean here in principle. And it seems it is as if the photon is actually sensing both arms of the interferometer simultaneously. But if you were to put a detector, for example, here, you will see it here or you will not see it here. That's like a particle. The part, if it's, it's like a particle which either gets reflected or transmitted. If I put a detector here, there's a probability of half of detecting the photon on this arm. If I put the detector here, there's the probability of half of detecting the photon here. But if I build up this interferometer, then I find that there is interference effect between the two parts and I can adjust so that the photon always arrives in 6 and never arrives in 5, for example. Now this has a very interesting consequence and uh, uh, I will briefly discuss this in the next class because uh, I can do uh, what are called as non-interaction measurement, interaction-free measurements. I can do an experiment in which I can tell you there is an object in arm 3 without the photon having gone through the arm 3 at all. Without having interacted with the object, I can tell you there is an object in arm 3. For example, if I put something here, if I block this arm, so either the photon then, it's like a detector. See, blocking means what? I put, a, I put a, uh, an opaque object here. That's like a detection. I'm not detecting it. I'm not making any measurement. But I stop the photon from continuing further. I've actually detected it. So the moment I detect it, There is a finite probability of uh, the photon coming in both arms. So I will discuss this in the next class, a very interesting aspect of this experiment uh, of this Maxent interferometer where I can um, do uh, interaction free measurements and uh, there are some very, very interesting counterintuitive concepts of this interferometer itself, which I will discuss in the next class. But first we will have a quiz. So, yeah. When delta L is 0. Because the photon can arrive in 5 or 6 along two indistinguishable paths. One is this path and one is this path. If the two are indistinguishable, I must calculate the probability amplitudes of these two arms, of these two paths and add the probability amplitudes before I calculate the total probability, which is mod square. What is actually happening is the probability amplitudes are interfering destructively because suppose the path lengths were exactly equal. This probability there is a pi by 2 phase shift and there is another pi by 2 phase shift. This one there is no pi by 2 phase shift at all. So they are out of phase here completely. The probability amplitudes cancel each other. This one they will add. But I can change the path length and make sure that there is constructive in 5 and destructive in 6. Okay.
So the problem is you have to verify whether two coherent states represented by alpha 1 and alpha 2 are orthogonal to each other. For example, two FOX states represented by n is equal to 1 for a FOX state 1 and FOX state 2 are orthogonal to each other. So uh, is alpha 1 and alpha 2 are they orthogonal to each other? Thank you.